being recorded. Before we begin, I want to emphasize that if at any point during this webinar you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to ask in the chat or in the Q&A module. The agenda of today is the following. First, we will begin with introducing ourselves and the IBM Digital Nation platform. Then we're going to give an overview of cloud and artificial intelligence, as well as their tools, such as IBM Cloud and IBM Watson. Finally, we will give a demonstration of these topics uh, and tools, followed by questions and answers session. My name is German Shane, and I'm one of the presenters for today. I'm a content and application developer for the IBM Digital Nation program. I oversee the development of new features, and I create course courses for cloud, IoT, and containers learning paths on this platform. In my spare time, I like to explore the city and take pictures. My colleague Hashim Noor will introduce himself now. Thank you, German. My name is Hashim, and I am also working as a content and application developer at IBM for the past two years. And my areas of focus are AI, blockchain, and APIs and microservices. Over to you, Gurman. All right, thanks. Uh, we would also like you to inform you about the new IBM Digital Nation mobile app that we have released. <laughs> you can find it on the Google Play Store, or you can uh, access the uh, app on the Google Play Store directly from the URL that we're going to send in the WebEx chat. What is IBM Digital Nation? Uh, IBM Digital Nation is a learning and enabling, enablement platform that allows you to achieve four goals. With this platform, you can learn as it offers a wide range of courses and tools to help you learn about the latest technological trends and helps you explore new opportunities in the real world. Uh, with our platform, you can also earn badges. Uh, we issue IBM Digital Badges and those are a verified proof of your achievements that are recognized, respected, and valued in the IT industry. They can also be included in your CV and shared on social media, such as LinkedIn. With our platform, you can innovate. We offer inspirational ideas and projects. We provide the foundations of the design thinking process. And we also have tutorials on how to build innovative solutions using free IBM Cloud Lite services. Finally, with our platform, you can find jobs. The platform offers a job advisor tool powered by Watson Technology that helps in job matching relevant to your skills and it also performs skill gap analysis and it advises you on the available courses on our platform that you can add to your learning journey so that you can bridge that gap. I will now be switching to my browser to show you uh, a bit of our platform. All right, so what you can see over here is the landing page. On this landing page, uh, we describe the four goals that uh, I've just told you about, the uh, four core tenets of the, of the IBM Digital Nation philosophy. And each of them is also a clickable link that leads to a, a relative uh, section of the website. So you can explore right away. And our website is split in uh, three journeys, Explorer, Innovator, and New Caller. Explorer is the beginner section. It offers the courses that introduce you to the new emerging technologies and describe how they're being used in the real world. So if you want to know the basics of AI, cloud, or blockchain, or IoT, you can start here and work your way up from there. Innovator focuses on project-based and hands-on courses. Uh, the main idea of the Innovator is that you get to learn the technology while applying it at the same time. And finally, New Color Journey offers courses oriented towards specific uh, job roles, such as artificial intelligence analyst uh, or a blockchain developer, et cetera, et cetera. We also offer a job advisor tool that is powered by IBM Watson and you can access it from the new color section. Um, also, we have all of our group uh, of all of our courses grouped under the courses page, so you can access it from the top navigational bar. Um, 
as you can see, we have all the learning categories listed over here. You can, cl you can click each one of them, or you can just click the courses page and look at all of the courses collected under one umbrella over here. We have them uh, sorted by learning paths and by journeys as well. So you can click on any you can click on any one of them. You can uh, see the information, such as the name, uh, how long the, uh, how long does it take to uh, take that course, and uh, if you click uh, the if you click one of them, you're going to be taken to a page with the uh, in depth overview of the course information. And again, as I said. Each, co uh, uh, each course gives you a digital badge that can be shared on social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and they're highly valued in the IT industry. I will now be switching back to the presentation. Uh, if you have uh, any delays in the screen share, please uh, notify us. Uh, we'll try to go slower and uh, accommodate you as much as possible. All right, what is cloud computing? Cloud computing, which is often referred to as simply the cloud, is the delivery of on-demand computing resources, everything from applications to data centers. Uh, and they're delivered over the internet on a pay-for-use basis. There are three major cloud type, uh, types, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. We will elaborate them in the next uh, slide. There are also three major cloud deployment models, which are private. It's a cloud infrastructure that is operated by one organization hosted on a client site. We also have public cloud, a cloud infrastructure designated for public use, and hybrid cloud, a combination of at least two cloud uh, infrastructures, as in at least on private and at least on public. All three deployment models are utilized in IBM Cloud. To explain the different cloud computing types, I will utilize the famous pizza as a service example. Imagine you want to have a pizza. There are several ways you can uh, get it. So the first way you can do it is uh, cook it yourself. In that case, you will need to provide uh, all the kitchen equipment and all the ingredients uh, yourself. This is the equivalent of not having a cloud, where you have to provide the hardware and software yourself. Or you can go to your friend's house. In that case, you have the uh, kitchen equipment already, but you still need to uh, get uh, some of the ingredients. Uh, such as pizza dough, toppings, cook, uh, and uh, then cook the pizza. This is equivalent to the infrastructure as a service. Hardware is there, but the entirety of the software is still handled by you. Uh, you can go to a cooking class where they will have the kitchen equipment and the pizza dough prepared for you, but you will still need to select toppings and cook that, uh, cook that pizza. That is equivalent to a plat uh, platform as a service. So you already have all the hardware, and you have a uh, middleware uh, a or a computational platform provided to you. All you need to do is uh, build uh, an app on top of it. And finally, finally, you can go to a restaurant, order your pizza, and relax. This is equivalent to software as a service. Both hardware and ready-made software is made available to you. Uh, IBM Cloud is an open st uh, standards cloud platform for building, running, and managing applications. With IBM Cloud, developers can focus on building excellent user experiences. They have several powerful tools at, at their disposal, such as DevOps tooling and a powerful set of IBM and third-party APIs and services. IBM Cloud offers the following services. Cloud Foundry applications, container tools, Kubernetes cluster, IBM Watson services such as tone analyzers, speech to text, text to speech, etc., and various AI, IoT, data science, and blockchain services. When you register on IBM Digital Nation Africa, 
you receive an IBM Cloud Lite account, which gives you access to 256 megabytes of memory and over 45 apps and services. What you see on your screen right now is an IBM Cloud dashboard. It is the starting page of the IBM Cloud that contains an overview of all your applications, services, and usage statistics. Once we go to the demonstration, I will explain several sections in detail to better familiarize you with the, with the UI of uh, IBM Cloud. One of the most important sections of um, IBM Cloud is the catalog. IBM Cloud Catalog contains the list of all applications and services available in IBM Cloud. Uh, you can choose and set them up from this page. As a Lite account user, again, you have access to more than 45 choices. The catalog is split in 14 categories. And the categories we'll be focusing on today are artificial intelligence and web and application. In order to build our, our solution, the voice-based conversation board, we will be utilizing the multi-purpose visual programming tool called uh, Node Red, which some of you may be familiar with uh, for those who uh, attended our previous webinars and uh, who took any IoT courses. But uh, in general, Node Red is a programming tool for wiring together hardware devices, APIs, and online services. IBM Cloud allows the deployment of Node-RED as its instance, therefore giving it access to a wide range of services available on, our, uh, on this platform. And now, Hashem uh, will talk about second half of our webinar topic, the artificial intelligence. Hashem, <coughs> the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So, let's talk about artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence, or simply AI, refers to the ability of a computer system to act like a human being by performing tasks that you would normally associate with, associate with humans. So tasks like learning and communication, self-correction, and so on. AI has a variety of applications. For example, AI can be used to predict weather patterns, stock market rates. Uh, another example, of application of AI is self-driving cars. AI is uh, also being used in hospitals to help doctors detect diseases and perform better diagnosis. So you see AI and its applications are endless. So now that you have an overview of AI, let me tell you what IBM has to offer in the field of AI. IBM's AI platform is called IBM Watson and it is integrated with IBM's cloud platform. And you can use IBM Watson services to build AI applications. Examples of these applications that can be built using IBM Watson include machine learning models, chatbot, visual, rec visual recognition applications, and so on. Apart from that, you can also convert speech to text and text into speech and so on. There are many AI services provided by IBM Watson. Some of these services include IBM Watson Assistant, which is a service powering the intelligent chatbots with, with a simple and intuitive interface. Speech to text, uh, a service for converting speech into text, text to speech, uh, a service which is used for converting text into speech. Tone Analyzer, which is a service for detecting emotion in a speech or text and visual recognition, which is a service for provide processing information from images and videos using AI. In today's demo, we'll be leveraging the IBM Watson Assistant service, the speech-to-text service, uh, and the text-to-speech services. So now that you have an, a, uh, an idea about AI and uh, what IBM has to offer in the field of AI, let me give you an example of one of the applications of AI, which is a chat. So a chatbot is an AI tool that can imitate human conversation. When you're chatting with a chatbot, then you send your message, the chatbot uses AI to identify the user's intent behind the message that he or she has sent. The chatbot then tries to determine what the user is looking for uh, or what the user wants to know. And then once the chatbot has figured that out, which is all done using AI, 
it the chatbot provides the most appropriate response to the user's query. Chatbots now have many applications. Uh, chatbots can be integrated with websites for to make it easier for users to browse through the website. They can be used in applications to answer some questions that are being frequently asked by the users. Chatbots can be used to extract feedback and so on. So you see there are a lot of applications and uses that chatbots have. And the best example of a chatbot is Siri, which is the iPhone's virtual assistant. You can use it to make phone calls, set reminders, set alarms, and so on. And it is simply, it is as simple as having a conversation. You can just ask Siri to make phone calls to one of your contacts, and it will do just that. So like Siri, Samsung users have their own chatbot, and that's called Bixby, Samsung Bixby, right? So this is, uh, so these are some of the use cases of a chatbot and what a chatbot is. Now, let us dive a little bit deeper into chatbots and see what are the major components that go into building a chatbot. So chatbots have three major components, intents, entities, and dialogue. And it's as simple as that. You put all of these three components together, and you have a chatbot. I want you all to remember these three components because we, use, we will be using these in our demo. And now let's look into what these components actually are and what their function is in a chatbot. So number one, the intent. The intent as the user, as the name suggests, it is the purpose of the user's statement. So basically it is what the user intends when they communicate something to the chatbot. For example, if I say to the chatbot, set a reminder for me. My intention behind that statement is that I want to set a reminder. Simple, right? But it's very important for the chatbot to categorize your statements according to the right intents, because it is only then that the chatbot will be able to guide you correctly or provide you with accurate information. So second component, number two, entities. Entities are used to further clarify the user's intent. So for example, as I mentioned previously, if I say to the chatbot, set a reminder for me, my intention is to set the reminder, but the chatbot needs more information about my intent in order for it to be able to help me appropriately. For instance, the chatbot needs to know what time the reminder is for, what date the reminder is for, and so on. And all of this additional information that is used to further explain the user's intent, it comes under entities. So, and then lastly, we have the dialogue, right? Now dialogue is the flow of conversation. It is basically how the chatbot will respond to the user's queries. And for, so now building on the earlier example, once I say to the chatbot, set a reminder for me, it will categorize my intention behind the statement. It will ask me follow-up questions such as what is the time, what is the date, et cetera. And uh, then it will finally set a reminder for me and prompt me that, okay, your reminder has been set. So this entire back and forth between the user and the chatbot, all of this is, all of this is encapsulated in the dialogue. Now, these are the three main components of a chatbot, intents, entities, and dialogues, and we'll be using all of these three components in our demo. So now my colleague Gurman will explain how today's demo will look like. Thanks, Hashem. So the demo today consists of five high-level steps. First of all, we will be deploying uh, the Watson services needed for our application to run. Then we will be creating a Watson Assistant chatbot. Uh, the third step is creating and integrating these Watson services <coughs> with the uh, Node-RED programming tool. Uh, then we will be creating uh, a flow in the Node-RED and finally deploying and testing our application. The architecture of our solution is fairly simple. The entirety of uh, the solution is hosted on IBM Cloud. 
The three services we utilize, Watson Assistant, Speech-to-Text, and Text-to-Speech, are made to work uh, together with the help of Node-RED tool. Uh, we will now be switching to the browser to do that demonstration. All right, so what you see in front of you is the IBM Cloud dashboard. The most important sections of this page are the job bar, uh, resource summary, and the location, and the, and the location status. Top bar has a navigation uh, menu in the top left corner of the screen, and also links that lead to the cat to the catalog, documentation, and the support center. The resource summary shows all the apps and have deployed uh, on your IBM Cloud Lite account. We're going to we're going to show up over here. And in fact, there is one already over here under the services category. Once we proceed to the demo, there will be more. And finally, location status shows which uh, regions are currently under maintenance, so that you know in which uh, region, uh, so that you know in which region it is uh, uh, best to not deploy your app, and in which region uh, you can you can deploy your app. All right, uh, Hashim will proceed uh, with the uh, Watson Assistant demo. All right. So now we'll be, so now that you have an idea about IBM Cloud and my colleague has taken you through uh, the dashboard of IBM Cloud, let me actually show you how you can create the assistant service and use that to create our chatbot on IBM Cloud. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is go to the search bar and we search for Watson Assistant. And once you, Right, what's an assistant? Right, here it is. So once it loads, we will click on the service and we load, wait for the page to load. Once the once uh, once the page has loaded, you'll be able to see all the all the information about the what's an assistant assistant service, such as which region you want to deploy the service service in. You can select, you can change. Uh, the service name, change it to something meaningful. For example, let's call it chatbot demo. Now, I just want to reiterate one more time that IBM Watson Assistant is the IBM Cloud service which we will be leveraging in order to create our chatbot. All right, so let's uh, we click on the create button in order to create the service and we'll give it a couple of moments for the service to be loaded, for the service to be created. And uh, and once and once the service is created, we'll be able, we'll be taken to the main page of the service from where we'll click on the launch Watson Assistant button. Right. So once we click on that, we'll be redirected to a new page and let's give it a couple of minutes for the page to load. And then once the page has loaded, give it a couple of more minutes. All right. So once the page has loaded, we will be able to see, we'll be able to see all these, uh, we'll be able to see the, the, all the, all the options that are available. We'll, We'll, we'll click on the assistance tab in order to go to the assistance menu. And then we will click on create assistant 
in order to start creating the chatbot. So there you go. You click on create assistant over here. You type webinar chatbot demo and you click on create assistant. And once that's once that's been done, you, we will start adding the chatbot component. And in order to do that, we'll, put, we'll start putting together the chatbot components, which I discussed earlier, which were the intent entities and dialogues. And in order to do that, we'll go and click on add dialogue skill. We'll click on create skill. We will select a name. Uh, let's call it, uh, so in our example, we will create a chatbot for uh, booking a table at a restaurant. So we can call our chatbot restaurant chatbot. And we'll click on create dialogue skill. <laughs> Once it's been created, you'll be able to see the, uh, uh, the prompt for the, for the chatbot here. And you can click on this and you'll be finally taken to the main page from where you'll be able to start creating the chatbot component. So these three components are the intents, entities, and the dialogues, as we discussed. So the first step is to create the intents. For that, we go and click on create intent. Right? So the first, so as I discussed, the intent is the user's intention behind, uh, behind any questions that they may ask the chatbot. So let us assume that a user comes to the website uh, for the restaurant and he or she wants to book a table at a restaurant. So the first question they will, uh, the first in piece of information they want to know is the, is the, is, is which branch the restaurant, is which branch the, uh, which branch of the restaurant they want to make the booking for. So we'll, we'll create, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, We'll capture this information in the intent. We'll name the intent branch and we'll click on create intent. And we can, and let's say we have uh, two branches of the restaurant. One is in downtown and one is in on first street, let's say, right? So what are the two pieces of information? Downtown branch, we click on add example. And uh, and the other branch is, and the other branch is uh, in First Street. So we we'll add that as well, right? So as you can see, we have added these two, uh, added these two, uh, added these two branches in the in the chat part. All right. So. We'll, uh, Can you please zoom a little bit to your screen? Zoom a little bit? Yes. Okay. Is that enough? This is good. Okay, all right. So up till now, what we have done is we have created a, uh, we have created a entity for the branch. And uh, we'll create another entity. Uh, sorry, not entity intent. And uh, now, so the the first thing that the user when they come to the website and they want to make a reservation, what they'll say to the chatbot is, uh, "I want to make a booking." Right. So the intent of the user over here is to make a booking. So we'll create another intent. We'll under we'll call it booking. We'll click on create intent, and we'll add user examples. So and these user examples of what how how a diff, how a user may ask with how different ways of asking the chatbot when the user wants to make a booking. So a user might say, "I want to make a booking," right? They might say, I want to make a 
reservation. And all of this is data which is being used to train the chatbot in order to correctly identify what the user is asking the chatbot for. The user might say, I want to reserve a table. Uh, they can also say, I want to book a table. The more data we provide, the more examples we provide, the better and the more accurate our chatbot is going to be. Right. So once that's done, we will switch on to entities. Right. Now, what is an entity? As I mentioned, um, the entity is uh, uh, the entity is used uh, is used to capture the follow up questions that that uh, the chatbot will ask the user in order to help them out clearly. So for our for our purpose, if the if the user is using the chatbot to book the table, uh, we need a couple of info pieces of information from the user, such as branch the, the the booking is for. And as we discussed, we have two branches, the downtown branch. Right? The user might call it downtown simply. And we have one more branch, which is on First Street. And the user might First Street branch. The user might say that as well. Right. So this is a piece of information that the user, uh, the chatbot will want to extract from the user when it is helping the user make a booking for uh, a table reservation. Uh, there are a couple of more pieces of information that the that the chatbot will need from the user, such as the time of the booking, the date of the booking, and so on. Uh, and for that, there are some entities that IBM Watson has that are already built in into IBM Watson. And if you want to use those entities, you can just click on System Entities. And so, for example, the entity for the date. If I want to get if the chatbot the date from the user, you can simply switch this toggle button to on and uh, and the chatbot will prompt the user for the date and you can do that for the time as well right so once that's done once we have added all the entities we'll move on to dialogues where we'll put together the intents entities and uh, uh, sort of create a conversation flow uh, that the user and the chatbot will go through so these are the different uh, these blocks, these are called the dialogue nodes, right? So, and the order of these nodes is very important because this is the order in which the conversation will take place. So the first node is the welcome node. And uh, this is the first, and this is gonna be the first thing that the, the chatbot says to the user as soon as the chatbot is opened. Uh, what we want to do here is we want to add another dialogue node below which is which is going to be used for our purpose which is uh, which is and our purpose is to book a table right so let's call this notebook a table and when do we want this entity to be triggered uh, sorry this dialog mode to be triggered it's when the intent of the user is to make a booking so when the intent of the user is to make a booking then the <coughs> The user will be redirect, redirected to this dialog mode. Now we, as we are, since we need to capture some pieces of information from the user, such as the date and the time of the booking, we need to enable something which is called slots, which will enable all of this information to be stored by the chatbot. So for that, we will click on customize, and we'll select this slots toggle button to on, and we'll click on apply. Once that's done. Let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see the interface better. And then over here, these are all the pieces of information that a chatbot will ask the user for. So for example, we want to, the chatbot will ask the user for the branch. And if it's not present, <clears throat> then the chatbot will ask the user this question, what branch is the booking for? We need another piece of information, which is the date. And if that is not present, then we'll ask the chatbot will ask the user this, this question, which is what date is the booking for? And lastly, the time. 
and if that is not present then if you don't if you don't provide the chatbot with uh, a time then okay. all right i have an error here so we'll just put this as this the be name we we'll select a name for the slot we'll call it time and if that's not present then the question that will be asked is what time is the booking for right and once we provide the chatbot with all these three pieces of information what will be the response of the chatbot the chatbot will respond by saying great your reservation is confirmed at the branch name and the branch name will be extracted or from from this uh, from this block over here on date at time right so this is the confirmation message that the chatbot will give to the user once the once the reservation has been successfully made all right so now you have we have created the intents we have created the entities and we have put them all together in a diagram so let us go and try it out so for that we'll click on the try it button and uh, as i said the first question that we'll be asked is uh, is mapped by the first dialog node which is the welcome node so the chatbot says hello how can i help you and the, the thing that uh, and since we want to book a table we'll go and the first thing we say to the chatbot is i want to book a table all right, so as you can see, the, the, chat, the chatbot correctly recognizes the intent of the user and it starts asking us the follow up questions, such as which branch is the booking for? We'll say Main Street. No, sorry, downtown. We don't have any. And again, the, uh, the chatbot recognizes the entity uh, we'll, and then it prompts us for the date. We'll provide uh, we'll provide the date, and lastly, it will ask us for the time of the book. And then, once we provide that, so we have provided the chatbot with all three pieces of information that are required to make a booking, and it gives us the confirmation message. Right now, in this example, we provided all these three pieces of information one by one. But this might not be the case. The, the user might the user might provide all these pieces of information in one go. So in that case, what will happen? Let's try it out. So we'll clear this and we'll directly tell the chatbot, I want to book a table in the downtown branch on 12th March. 2020 at 1 p.m. So we have provided all the pieces of information and and the chatbot recognizes all of that. Oh, all right, so the time didn't properly. So let us try this one more time. So we provided the branch and the date. The only piece of information that is required is the time. And once you provide that, you'll get the confirmation message. So as you see, this is how the chatbot works. We create, it's a simple process. You just need to create the three major components of a chatbot, which is the intents, entities, and then you put them all together in a dialogue. So that's the first half of the demo, which was to create a chatbot. And uh, now we'll be integrating the chatbot with other services such as the text to speech and speech to text service. And for that, I will go and create those services. So first I'll create the text to speech service. I'll search for it using the search bar. 
I click on the service once I see it, and then I click on the create button. Let's give it a few minutes for the service to load. And once the text to speech service has been created, we'll create another service, which is the speech to text. Again, we'll use the search bar to search for the service. We we'll click on the service, and uh, once it's been loaded, <coughs> we'll click on the create button. All right. And let's give it a couple of seconds for this to load. And there you have it. So we have created a chatbot using the IBM Watson services, and we have created a speech to text service, a text to speech service. And uh, what will be in the second half of the demo, my colleague German will show you how to integrate this, ta uh, this chatbot with the speech to text and text to speech services using the Node Red Flow editor. All right, so over to you, Bernard. All right, thank you very much, Harsham. So we've also zoomed, zoomed in the screen a little bit for those of you who have trouble seeing. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is to create a Node-RED Visual Programming Tool instance on IBM Cloud to actually connect all of the IBM Cloud services. To do so, please go to the catalog. Uh, within the catalog, you need to select the Software tab. And within that tab, uh, choose web and application category as we discussed previously in the presentation. Um, the offering that you need to look for is Node uh, Red App. So we will wait for it to load. In this screen, all you need to do is select, is press the create uh, app button. You can choose the application name, but uh, usually it is uh, set automatically and it's, uh, and it's gonna be unique. Um, what I also recommend is that uh, you select a region and you keep it consistent for all of your services. So the region that we picked in other services was London. So, so we're choosing London. Pre, uh, press the create button. It's gonna take a, it's gonna take a couple of seconds for, uh, for it to be created. All right, so it shows up a success. Now, uh, you, you, now you're taken to, uh, where you can manage your new Node-RED application. However, for the tool to be completely available, you need uh, to deploy it. So we need to wait for the deploy your app uh, button to become available. It's going to happen once the cloud and uh, service is fully provisioned. This would this will take uh, this will take a couple of seconds. All right, we're done. Proceed with deploying your app. You will be taken to this screen. In this screen, you need to generate an IBM Cloud API key for uh, the application deploying process to work. All you need to do is press the is press the new button and click OK. Key will be the key will be generated, and the next thing they need to do is uh, allocate the required memory for your application. Uh, my personal recommendation is to give all 256 megabytes of your IBM Cloud Light memory to ensure smooth operation. Select London <laughs> as your region, since this is the one which we, that we utilize uh, in all of our services and press create button. Now, this process is gonna take, this process is gonna take some time. You can see it's going through the continuous 
process. It went through the uh, generating code uh, process, and now it's uh, checking cache and allocating uh, resources. You can once it shows uh, once it shows up at success, that means that uh, you have the tool chain enabled, and you can monitor the status of your application uh, under the delivery pipelines. The status when the status shows up as success, this is uh, when you can use your Node-RED application. While we wait, however, we can proceed with uh, connecting, we can try to proceed with connecting uh, all of our services. Or actually, no, we need to wait for the application to become fully uh, available to do so. However, while we wait, I can demonstrate to you all the IBM Cloud uh, services that we have uh, deployed, you can see the Watson Assistant, text-to-speech and speech-to-text, all available under the services, um, all available under the services category. And our, applica our application will show up under Cloud Foundry Apps once the, uh, uh, once the delivery pipeline finishes. Okay, so the status has changed to in progress. We need, we need to give it a couple of minutes uh, for, it to, for it to deploy. So in the meantime, while we wait, we can answer some questions. Uh, we, have a question, uh, we have a question from the user for Hashem. Right, so the question is, what if the date selected is has already been reserved? So in that case, we don't account for this scenario in the chatbot that we created. However, uh, you can always uh, integrate the chatbot with other services, and uh, you can also integrate it with a database from where the chatbot can fetch all these values and help the user accordingly. My colleague, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, be sharing, <clears throat> I'll be sharing a link with you later during this webinar, which will show you the process of uh, these integrations. And so I hope that answers the question. And in general, uh, whenever you develop an application, you can account uh, for uh, you can account for any cases. Uh, it's uh, it's just a matter of uh, awareness and having a clear understanding of uh, what you want to achieve. Uh, because ultimately, what you <coughs> ultimately what you have uh, are just uh, tools uh, with uh, which you can work and build any application you want. Right, so our our application is still in the in the process is still in progress. However, as you can see, it's showing up in the uh, under the uh, Cloud Foundry apps. So let us let us connect all the services uh, that we that we deployed to the uh, uh, node to the node red. To do so, select your node red uh, application. Proceed to connections and click create connection button. Connect each service by hovering over the service and pressing the connect button. Each time you connect a service, you will be offered to restage your application. So uh, it's best to not do that until you have all the desired services connected to your application. So I'm going, I connected the chatbot. Now we're going to connect uh, speech to text.
And finally, we are connected text to speech service. So while it is being connected, I'm going to check up on the status of uh, the deployment. As you can <laughs> see, it shows up as success. So all the delivery pipeline stage have passed successfully, and our application is fully available, ready to go. No dread application, that is. All right, so and in the meantime, the text to speech service was connected. This is the last service we needed. In that case, we can confidently restage our app, which means that the app will be restarted and will not be available for a couple of seconds. German, once yes. we wait for the application to start, we have a question. And John is asking uh, about the costs of the app after deployment. Can so uh, when it comes to IBM Cloud Light account, there are no costs asso associated with uh, your services or your uh, application status that you deploy. Uh, as long as you select, as long as you select the uh, Light Plan and stay within the uh, um, and stay and stay within the uh, memory allocation given. So I hope that answers your question. As you can see, our app is now finally available. Let's proceed with setting it up. The first time you open the uh, Node-RED instance, you will be taken to the installation page. So uh, you can have the option of uh, securing your Node-RED editor, in which case uh, you need to set up your username and password. Right now, we're, right now in this demo, we will not be setting uh, up the authentication. Um, then you just need to go through the last two information steps and you're done. By going to your node red editor flow, by pressing that button, you will be taken to the uh, actual tool. The first step of uh, creating our node red flow is, uh, is installing some uh, some third party nodes for our uh, for our application to do so click on the top right menu and uh, select manage palette button you will need to you will need to install two packages one of them uh, to record sound for our uh, voice based conversation bot another one to play sound so the microphone node that records sound is uh, located under browser util. You, you can find it by typing browser <coughs> package. Under the, under the install tab, you can see node red contrib browser utils. This is exactly what we need. Press the install button. Nodes added to palette. You can see the microphone is among one of them. Perfect. Let's proceed with installing the uh, second package, which is Play Audio. Node which shows up as Node Red Country Play Audio. A 
Again, as you can, uh, no uh, note has been added to the palette called play audio. Perfect. So, in order to simplify the creation of our flow for this demo, we will be using an import flow functionality. We will import the entire flow from a JSON <laughs> file, which Wurud will share. Uh, the link to which Wurud will share in the chat. However, to do so, however, to import that file, you need to go to the top right menu, go to flows, and press the. Uh, sorry, go to flow. Uh, go to go to the import menu select a file to import the file that uh, we have is called flows.json and again the, the link to this file will be shared uh, to you by Wuru. you can select the current flow and you will see imported. Uh, you can see all the nodes imported. So the breakdown of these nodes is the following: we have a microphone node through which we will speak, and uh, the sound will be recorded in the node red flow. It will then be taken to speech to text uh, node, which will convert the audio that you have just spoken to text. This function node will use JavaScript to convert uh, all the text that you have into an object that Watson Assistant can understand and, uh, and then respond to. The output, of the answer, the output from Watson Assistant will be taken to a second JavaScript node, which will uh, tr transform this response to an object that a Watson text-to-speech service can understand. Finally, we will convert that object to, uh, and we will convert that object into another one, which a play audio node can understand. And you can hear of, uh, your, uh, of your voice based chatbot. So you need to connect them exactly in that sequence for this demonstration to work. And again, we will, we're sharing with you the entire flow. I will just uh, show you how to do the uh, configuration of each and every one of those nodes. So microphone node uh, is already configured. Uh, for the speech-to-text node, you need to select uh, the desirable language. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will be going with the US, uh, with the US English language. That is it. Uh, the all the code in the uh, function nodes is already provided. So uh, node red is a tool which is based on Node.js, and therefore it requires the uh, JavaScript uh, language for programming. Uh, usually, uh, you need to know a little. You need to know a little bit of coding uh, to set up those, but it's uh, it's not very hard. So in this particular case, all you need to do is um, uh, you need to you have a, an object called MSG. You need to extract the transcription of it and uh, assign the transcription to an object called MSG payload. MSG payload is the main object of Node Red. It's uh, universally understood by all Node Red nodes, and therefore, uh, and therefore you can pass uh, the data among all of the nodes. Once this is done, again, as we discussed, it's being transferred to the uh, Watson Assistant node. And uh, the only thing we need to provide to this Assistant node is the Assistant, ID, is the assistant ID, which we can take from the chat, which we can take from the chatbot that Hashem has created. To do so, uh, proceed back to your IBM Watson You can uh, go to the left menu and you can see the assistance option. Find the chatbot that you want to connect, the system that you want to connect, go to its settings, and go to API details. 
you will see many settings. The one in particular we need is the assistant ID. So we will copy it. And paste it over here. Since we have connected all of the service on the IBM cloud, on the IBM cloud level, all the authentication has already been taken care of by the IBM cloud. The next uh, JavaScript node that we need to connect will perform the uh, transformation of the Watson Assistant output to an out to the output understood by the uh, <coughs> by the text by the text to speech. Then, in the text to speech node, you will need to set up the desired language again. So, in this case, again, we're setting up uh, a US English language. You also can uh, choose the several uh, pre programmed voices, both male and female. Again, according, all according to, to how you want to program your chatbot. The last JavaScript, the last JavaScript function node will uh, take the MSG to speech object, which is an output from uh, what's in text to speech, and uh, convert it to MSG to payload object, a universal object understood by all node red, uh, by all node red nodes. And finally, it will be taken to the uh, it will be taken to the play audio node. Perfect. We have everything we need to launch our demo. So I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to say I want to make uh, I want to make a reservation to the microphone and the uh, uh, and and the application will respond with uh, 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 with its uh, with its uh, pre-programmed response. So, uh, to make our application available, we need to click on the deploy button. Successfully deployed. Perfect. We can then proceed. So, when you click on the microphone node, usually it will ask for the permission from the browser to allow uh, the use of your microphone. So we will allow it. Yes, we will allow it. I want to make a reservation. So you will see it uh, going through the steps underneath. As you can see, it's requesting, then what's an assistant is being called, and then text to speech. And finally, which branch is the booking for? This is the response we're getting. So I hope you've heard, uh, you have all heard of it. And like we said before, you can configure your application in any way you want. And uh, uh, usually Node-RED shows all the steps that it goes through before giving you an output. Uh, the uh, would give you an instant uh, reply. And this concludes our demo. I will now be switching back to the presentation. Right. <laughs> our journey on IBM Digital Nation goes from the simplest high-level overview to the courses focused on every aspect of cloud computing. The Explorer section has an introductory course on cloud that gives an introduction to the cloud technology and presents some of its use cases. The Innovator section has a course that focuses on platform as a service within IBM Cloud, and, we, and the course is called Getting Started with IBM Cloud version 2. And also, we have eight, uh, eight skill-based courses uh, on the cloud journey, 
in the new color section. In these courses, I aimed to make you a, a professional cloud application developer. Hashem will walk you over the artificial intelligence learning path. So the artificial intelligence learning path is comprised of 13 courses and uh, the duration of the entire track is around uh, 61 hours. So you have 61 hours of learning available just for AI on the IBM Digital Nation Africa platform, starting all the way from the basic introductory explorer course, which is the introduction to AI. Moving on to the project-based courses, uh, starting from build your own chatbot to other innovator courses, and then a deep dive into uh, technical courses aligned with the artificial intelligence analyst job role uh, in the new color courses. All right. So this concludes our presentation. Mm, it was a great pleasure to have you all again. And we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you so much for attending the webinar. Thank you, see everyone. You and enjoy Thank your you. weekends.